Abu Zia, in this Baimuke episode, we are going to take a closer look at Men's Gold, how they started their operations, how they got people to invest with them, their CEO, Nanapia Minsan, as well as explain some of the things going on that you may not understand. Some of you know the name Men's Gold, but not how they even started. So, in this episode, we are going to go through most of them. Yes, Shaz here. When you ask most people what Men's Gold is, all they say is it's like DKM. They took people money and now they can't pay it back and Bank of Ghana let it go on. And I think it's a little bit more complicated than that. So let's break it down. In 2014, Bank of Ghana discovered that Men's Bank, that was their name before, was operating a microfinance in Accra as well. And they were disguising it or Mama Naya sent you more trade gold no? and also illegally using the name Bank. When you are disguising it or more trade gold, at the time, no? now, there was other companies doing the same microfinance business. Like God is Love, Jasper Motors, DKM, you know. Ghana has had a lot of those companies going back to the 1980s. And Men's Bank they didn't want people to think DS was the same thing as the other companies. So on March 11th, 2015, Bank of Ghana issued a notice by publishing the name of companies that were doing business illegally. And Men's Bank's name was on that list. So what did Men's Bank do? They changed their name from Men's Bank with a K to Men's Bank with a C. So on April 13, 2016, Bank of Ghana again issued a notice warning people about the deposit taking that was going on at Men's Bank and told people they were not licensed. So if you continue to do business with them, you are doing it at your own risk. And Bank of Ghana wrote to Men's Bank to caution them about the illegal deposit taking activity and they still didn't stop. So on August 2nd, 2016, Bank of Ghana invited Men's Bank and their management to talk about their illegal deposit taking activity. And on 16th August, Bank of Ghana contacted officials from the Minerals Commission and the Precious Mineral Marketing Company, PMMC, the company that gave Men's Bank their license. So Bank of Ghana contacted them to check on the license status of Men's Bank and started investigations into their gold vault market product. Bank of Ghana had no idea what was going on in Men's Bank because they were not regulated by Bank of Ghana or the government. And to do what Men's Bank was doing, you need to have a registered company under law which they had and a license to trade gold which they also had so the SEC Security and Exchange Commission Bank of Ghana or the Ghana government cannot just shut Men's Bank down without proof of illegal activities going on at Men's Bank so while all these investigations were going on into Men's Bank the NDC government left power in 2016 so in 2017 the company Men's Bank that was under investigation changed their name again from Men's Bank to men's gold and just like that the men's bank company bank of ghana was investigating was not existent so now how did men's gold pulled off what is supposedly one of the biggest scam in ghana's recent history well one because of their interest rate of 7 to 12 percent which basically translates to if you invest 1 million cities with them by 10 months later you will make that 1 million cities in profit plus your initial 1 million cities you invested Two, they had a business that has been operating for three years, even if they've had some name changes, and paid customers their profits or dividends on time, on the money they invested with them. And also people telling other people that Jack may invest with men's gold or Mutuya Meka every month into Sukoko Invest TV. Then people keep going. And the more that was going on, their customers were growing bigger and bigger. Three, at this point, they were getting people to join men's gold, but not at the rate they wanted. So Nanapia Mason knew that to do this and get more people, he had to go all in. And there was a time limit to what he was doing. So what did he do? He branched out. He opened other companies, Xylophone Media, and signed celebrities with huge amount of following to spread the word of Men's Gold to get more people to join Men's Gold. So he started recruiting them one by one with the likes of Kumi Jeta, Becca, Joyce Blessing, Shatawale, Stoneboy, among others. Because it's like this. Even Samsung is a big company. So I'm releasing new phone. No, I'm going to say, oh, phone where they come out. It's be a metal. It's less likely for people to buy. But if someone like Kofi Adoma goes and buys the phone for $1,000, reviews the phone, and then tell people that, oh, this Samsung phone is very good. Everyone should go and buy some. If you have the money, you are more inclined to buy the phone based on the review and recommendation of Kofi Adoma. And that was what happened here. The 12 celebrities that were signed by Xylophone had over 10 million followers online. 
10 million. And most of these followers trust their celebrities to a point. So when they tell them to buy something or to go and get this thing, they tend to do so if they want that thing. And one way or the other, all of these celebrities were promoting men's good. So that wasn't enough. So the Napier means are open other companies, TV stations, radio stations to promote men's gold because that was where the money they used to sign all these artists were coming from. Sooner or later, it wasn't enough to just act the part. Say, oh, we scout, discover two and four, six and He had to also play the part. That was when we started him with luxurious stars, brand new land cruises and whatever. All these crazy things to get more people to trust him. He was investing, but was very wise about the investments he was making. Recently, there was Kumi Guitar on Kofi TV, and he said his money is also invested in men's gold. Which made me think, after he signed the artist, give them a car, a house, and they are signing bonus, then he convinces them to reinvest that money. So basically, he is giving you money and taking the money back without you even realizing. <laughs> Men's Gold agenda to take over Ghana was not over. So they made sure their name was kept in the news. So whatever thing they were doing, they made sure it was at the topmost. Omoko Ivesa, Len Cruces, as on Super 15. Then the news will pick it up. Omoko Ebony, a year number bonds, 50,000 CDs. The news pick it up. Almost sponsored Premier League, $10 million. The news picked it up. So it was, they were constantly in the news all the time. And the more that you are in the public eye promoting something, the more people are opened and inclined to join that thing. People at TV stations, radio stations were promoting their product by talking about them. Even online bloggers were begging men's good, Nanapia Mensa, for phones and laptops, which was disgusting. Yeah, bloggers, dear Omo, I work Ghana. I will say Omo Peso, Omo Shi, Nanapia Mensa, CEO of the company. Merry Christmas. Now, Omo Assembly. And so, at a tuna name, um, you baby seen an appear, man. Say, okay, number one, um, a happy, a Merry yeah, Christmas, Christmas and a Happy New Year, December, about Christmas, about Nana, you sure anymore. There are certain things that uh, you have the cage man who I made my say laptop, maybe to say iPhone, but me say, yeah, Nana, the Christmas week, you say, over tell me iPhone X, I, iPhone X, and I say iPhone 10, go to my eye, but you never answer what I was saying. iPhone X, thank you, he went up and up and up and up to the president of the nation, Nanado, which we all saw. In this picture right here, which people says Nanado endorsed his business, which is not true. Let me explain. According to the Deputy Minister of Information, Payos Enam Hajid, 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 this was how Nanado and Nam One's picture came about. Nam One was part of a 10 member GFA, Ghana Football Association, and CAF, Confederation of African Football Delegation, that visited Nanado at the Jubilee House. Mr. Hajide, well, we didn't mean me, Nimbo, who was the then Deputy Minister of Youth and Sports, said Namwan was part of that delegation because at that time, Xylophone Cash was the number one sponsor of the Premier League. So that was how Namwan got to take a photo with the President of Ghana and not necessarily that Nanado endorsed his business. Men's Gold worked their plan not just through celebrities they signed on Xylophone, but other top artists like Sarkodie and other top top people. Sarkodie's wife even at a point got into trouble for defending men's gold. And not just her, but other people that have invested their money into men's gold. Even now, people still defend men's gold and blames Bank of Ghana for this mess. Seven, they had companies in other countries around the world or made it appear that they had more companies to get you to trust them even more. I remember Israeli did a report on their UK office, which Namwan responded, Hello Israeli, today I celebrate your stupidity and retarded mindedness. Set up a provision store today in a kiosk and employ just one Ghanaian. Yeah, CEO said that. Aye, how what were you fucking? <laughs> so most of what I've said happened in the past two years, which helped increase men's gold customers to over 85%, which is how they grew to 1.8 million customers and over $200 million investments. So you can't just blame the ordinary person for investing because look, you check the list of what I just said. It's bananas. So why did this happen at all? One, some people got greedy and wanted to make more money quickly by investing everything they had. 
I even hear some people invested one to six million dollars. You have one to six million dollars. Why invest it into something this fragile? Whilst you can even use that money to open three or four companies. Two, they were not regulated, so no one really knew what was going on. And even at the point, Bank of Ghana invested 8,000 cities to just figure out how things were run at men's good. Yeah, they duped Bank of Ghana too. So why did Bank of Ghana and the SEC, Security and Exchange Commission, shut men's gold down? The answer is no, they didn't. Because the Bank of Ghana and the SEC suspected that what men's gold was doing was a Ponzi scheme. If you don't know what a Ponzi scheme is, it's a type of a fraud which basically they get people to invest with them and then pays that people their interest with money from new investors. So the SEC suspected this was what men's gold was doing. So they simply told men's gold that, hey, stop accepting new deposits and pay off the people that have already deposited with you plus their interest. That was what they said. Because if you can do this, then that means you don't rely on new customers to keep your company afloat. But if you can't, however, then what you're doing is a Ponzi scheme. So that was when Anapia Minson started going after SEC and the Bank of Ghana by telling people that the Bank of Ghana and the SEC are shutting men's go down. For you to easily blame Bank of Ghana and the SEC if you don't research the story. <laughs> so where did the money people invested in men's go go? And I think one, we all saw how Nanapia Minson was living, buying all these luxurious cars, he even bought a jet giving out money, sponsoring events, all these crazy things. So that's one way the money was spent. And two, Eric Pope, a serious tech expert on Kofi TV yesterday, gave an interesting theory which basically says, Nam one reinvested the money that was invested into men's gold into cryptocurrency. And the day the two cryptocurrency companies, Bet World Center and Crypto World, collapsed, that was the same day men's gold too was shut down. If you don't know what a cryptocurrency is, it's basically a digital money that can only be spent online. That cannot be tracked or traced and is not regulated by anyone. I'll leave a link in the YouTube video description if you want to watch his explanation of it. So the question becomes, what now? Are people going to get their money back? Well, for that, it's a bit complicated. The second deputy governor of Bank of Ghana, LC Awaji, says they want the public on multiple occasions to stop dealing with men's gold. Bank of Ghana has been very clear uh, for a long while about the fact that this was an unlicensed operation. We were not responsible for it. We tried. We warned the public uh, at different points in time. We told everybody if they continue to keep their money there, they did that at their own risk. And since Men's Gold was not regulated by them, like the other banks, they are not willing to settle anyone. So the next course of action may be a directive from the government. And the government too has been a bit silent on the issue because of how complex it is. And I think maybe they are also doing their own investigation into the matter. And other people also ask, where is Nam One? Some say he's in South Africa and some say he's in UK, but... And now come Too soon? Okay. People say there is a warrant for his arrest by the Supreme Court. But according to Ghana Wem, the Supreme Court says there is no case in front of them which warrants the warrant for his arrest. Some also say the CID have declared him a wanted man and have requested a red notice from Interpol, which makes him a wanted man in 194 countries. But the director of police CID, DCOP, Mahame Yeti Adudankwa, said, as far as the police were concerned, they have never invited or arrested Nanapia Minsa because there is no complaint at the police headquarters as of last Wednesday that added that Yoko, Economic and Organized Crime Office, is investigating Nam One. Abuja, I hope this video helped you understand a bit into the men's gold saga. And if it helped you, then it will probably help someone else. So please do me a favor and share this video for me. There's more I wanted to add, but the video has been too long. If you haven't already, then please subscribe to my YouTube channel for more videos like this. Follow me on Instagram for any update on Magreb TV. Till we meet again, my friends. Take care.